Hi guys, in this video we are going to be going through IUPAC naming and formula. Um, so basically what IUPAC naming and formula, uh, it's just simply a way to name compounds. So what it says in order to give compounds a name, certain rules must be followed. When naming organic compounds, the IUPAC, International Union for Pure and Applied Chemistry nomenclature naming scheme is used. Basically, it just, it just governs the way that compounds are named. That's what IUPAC is. You don't even know to, need to know the definition. All you have to know are the rules that are involved in IUPAC. Right. So I'm going to go through the rules and then we'll go through some examples. Um, please pay very close and careful attention to what's on the screen um, because these rules will be followed and you need to know them properly. Right. So the, the general rule of thumb is you start from the end of the compound and work yourself backwards. Uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the way you actually name the compound. So you start at the end the suffix and work backwards to get the actual name of it. So the first thing you'll do is you'll get the functional group um, the suffix associated with the functional group. The first thing is to get the su suffix and that's from the functional group. Whether it's an alkane, an alkyne, uh, aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, alcohol, etc. You'll be able to tell that from the functional group. So that gives you the suffix. Uh, from our previous videos, uh, you may have seen what, what the functional group is. Uh, if you haven't, go check those videos out. So the prefix of a compound's name is determined by the number of carbons in the longest carbon chain that contains the functional group. So basically the prefix or the suffix is the end of the, the name of the compound uh, comes from the functional group, right? So this is the functional group will give you suffix. The prefix comes from the longest chain. So the longest chain would be something like if you have a chain like this, and then maybe there's like a branch. You should have seen branches already. Right the branch. This is the longest chain, and it will give you the prefix. That's what you get the prefix from, right? So I'm just gonna. There's just two tables here. They're very clear, uh, but basically they will describe to you. Uh, what the suffix and the prefixes are. I'll just, I'll just read them out in case you don't know. I also post a group to a more clearer picture and a website with, with plenty of examples as well as these tables, right? So basically what this table says is functional group and suffix. The first one is alkane, so the suffix is ane. Alkene, suffix is ane. Kine, ion, alcohol, or aldehyde, al. Ketone, own, or one, it's actually written as one, O N E. Then carboxylic acid is oic acid, oic, O I C, oic acid. And finally, ester is O8, as in O8. Remember, these are suffixes, so something will come here first, right? Then the prefix, prefix is for the number of carbons in the longest chain, so that's the number of carbons. If it's just one carbon, then it's just going to be meth, M E T H, meth. Then after that is eth, prop, but, spelled as but. Then it's the same as your shapes, how you say. So this is a, you got pent, hex, hept, oct, etc. Right. So that's just from from your general, from your, what you have known from maths or geometry. Right. So that's your prefix and that comes from the carbon chain here. Right. So that's the second thing you need to know. Okay, what's three? Number the carbons in the longest carbon chain. Um, sorry, you need to start numbering so that the functional group is on the carbon with the lowest possible number. So we need to start with the carbon at the end closest to the functional group, right? So basically, it's saying what the third rule is you need to number. So just say you have some molecule that looks like this, a really long one, and over here there's an O. H, so it's an alcohol. You don't start numbering one, two, three, four. No, you have to start closest. This is wrong. You start closest to the functional group. So this will actually be one, that'll be two, and that'll be three. That's what this that's what you're saying. So you need to number your carbon chain. That's the third rule. Fourth is to look for branches. So maybe over here there'll be a branch here like that. That's called the methyl branch. See, you count the number, you name them by counting the number of carbon atoms in the branch and they end in an aisle. So remember, meth is for one. So over here, there's a carbon, a single carbon. So this will just be a meth. And it ends in yl, methyl. Okay. That's the fourth rule. 
Fifth rule. You need to note the position of the main carbon chain. If there's more than one, the same type excuse me, of branch group, then both numbers must be listed. Example 2,4. And the prefixes are listed in the table 4.7. This is table 4.7 yeah. These these prefixes must be used. If the molecule is an alkane, the branch group must be in the carbon with the lowest possible number. Right? So what this is saying is saying if there's a branch, so if you have something like this, right? And there's a branch here, remember we just discussed methane and a branch here. So we have to try, so for, remember we'd, uh, if they were just single bonds, right? Just for example, all single bonds, we name the longest chain. And it'll be in the order which is the closest to the branch. So this will be branch 2, so it'll be 2,3 methyl. And this is 6 hex, and since it's single bonds, it'll be hex 8. Uh, yeah, something like that. Hexane, sorry, hexane something like that. That's just an example. So this is basically saying that the position of the group is important. Um, so if it's, this is the, the exception if it's a uh, alkane, that means it's only single bonds, but if there's some functional group, even if it's a uh, alkene or alkyne, or if it's an OH, then you name, you uh, label, or you name the group um, uh, closest to the functional group, right? Or you name the molecule closest to the functional group. And then finally, branch groups must be listed before the name of the main chain, uh, ignoring dietal. Oh, and this will be, this is not just, sorry, I just, I just remembered about the table. So, we see that there's two methyls, so this will be 2,3 dimethyl. That's one of the points that was made by the for table for one. It's the, since there's two methyls, this will indicate there's two methyls. So, it's di, those three, it'll be tri, four, it'll be tetra, etc., etc. Right. That's what I was doing. Um, then, rule number five, for alkyl halides. Um, or these are haloalkanes. The halogen item, halogen atom, is treated in the much the same way as branch groups. So give the halogen atom a number to show its position on the carbon chain. If there's more than one halogen atom, their number should be listed and a prefix should be used. For example, 2.3 dio diodo, or 3.3 trichloro. Right? Um, these these gives you the name for halogens. So remember haloalkanes or halogens. Um, treat them the same way as branch groups. And they are listed before the name of the main chain, right? In alphabetical order. So there might be, uh, if there's, uh, if you have, and remember it's in alphabetical order. So if you have, um, if I have to just think of my head, you have uh, something where it's like C, 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 you have a bunch of different ones. And you have a B, R for brom bromine, and then you have a C, L. Then the name you would, oh, just say, ah, this is better. If you have a C, L, and then a B, R. It'll actually be named bromochloro. It'll be named bromochloro. Even though the chlorine comes first, it'll be, it'll be named bromochloro because of alphabetical order. Right. Let's move on. Finally, the last rule is combine the elements in the name of the name into a single word in the following order. First is the branch group or the halogen atoms in alphabetical order. And ignoring these prefixes. When, the, when these prefixes means die, means like die or try, not the prefix of the chain, right? Then it's the prefix of the main chain, that's what I was talking about, that's the C's, right? So whether it's penta, hex, this in this case will be uh, pent, uh, hex, or if it's but, uh, eth, etc, etc. And finally, name ending according to the functional group and its position on the longest carbon chain, right? So this is according to the functional group, is the last thing. So first you put your branch, there'll be some branch thing here, then the next thing will be your prefix, and then your suffix. But actually, when you when you actually do it, you start from this way. You you find first the suffix, then you find the prefix, then you find the uh, branch, and then you combine them. Right. So my my just just to sum up all the rules, and you can note these down. These are the rules for IU pack. Okay. First, you find the sub functional group, then you find the prefix, the longest carbon chain. Then you number the whole the chain according of the longest the longest sorry name the the carbons in the longest carbon chain number so let's number it then you find your branch groups and then you combine so this is this is the order you should find it in so we'll do some examples now just to go through it um, and then from there um, this is two types where you're given a uh, uh, structure and you ask to find the the IUPAC name or you might be given the IUPAC name and asked to draw the structure all right so these are rules just just remember them write them down. And we'll go through. I mean, you should know your tables by now. This is something that you should already know of, right? 
this is number these so we know what we're doing we call this one two three four five six okay i'll do a couple of these and the rest will be as homework so let's start with number one okay so the first thing to do would be to determine the functional group um so let's just do number one yeah. so you don't really have to write down all these things but first uh, you've got the functional group it's got single bonds only, as you can see, only single bonds, single bond, single bond, single bond. Uh, that means it must be an alkane, right? Alkane. So we know it's an alkane. Uh, therefore, suffix, suffix will be something in. Okay. What is the longest carbon chain? So the longest carbon chain can either go like that. Alternatively, it can go like that. Or if you want, it can go in this direction, like so. So that's the longest carbon chain. Okay, so in this way, it doesn't matter. This is the easiest way to name it. So that's the longest carbon chain. And uh, we, can, we can just, uh, so that's the longest carbon chain. So you found the longest carbon chain. So that was the first step or suffix, second ch uh, chain. So this is going to give you prefix. How many in the longest carbon chain is? One. So this is looking a little untidy. Let me erase this. It's the longest carbon chain is here. How many in the longest carbon chain? One, two, three. And then the other is a branch, right? So it's three. So if there's three, it means that the prefix must be what's three? Three is prop. 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 So three is four. So that means it's the propane, right? So sorry, prop. Okay. And that that would be it actually. If there was no branch, it would just be propane, and that's it. But in this case, there is a branch. Alright, so let's name this, right? So we can either name from the back or the front, in this case it doesn't matter, because either way, it's still going to be... Um, it'll still be two in the middle. So the second on the branch, sorry, the branch will be on number two. So if you start naming from the left, we we'll, we can see. So that's the third step is to, to do a naming of the... Numbering of the branch, why do I say name? It's numbering of the branch. Alright, we found next... So, so this was one, is suffix, two prefix, Three is numbers. Four. Four is to look for the branches. So we have a single branch here. It's just one carbon. Uh, that's just one carbon. So uh, so single carbon is meth. And we know it's, it's just single carbon on its own. So it's going to be methyl. That's it. It's going to be methyl. Right. And the final step here was to combine all of them together to get the IPAC name. So we go in the opposite way. We start with the... Oh, and also which branch it's on, it's methyl, it's on the second one. So it's going to be 2-methyl. That's what you should know. Okay, so it's on the second one. That's why I have to number so we can actually give a name or a position to the branch. Okay, so the final step would actually be to write down what the IUPAC name is for number one. So we, we go in reverse order. So we start from number four, so it's 2-methyl. Uh, then you go to the prefix, number two. Prefix, prop, and then we go to the suffix, and that's your IUPAC name, 2-methylpropane. So you just have to really, really know your rules here, right? Uh, we'll do another example now. Um, there's quite a few here. I won't be able to get to all of them in this video, but I'll try to do quite a few, as many as I can. Okay, uh, this is the next one, number two. Okay, let's just make this just a tiny bit bigger and easier to write. Okay. Two. Okay, uh, this is number two. Okay, this is number two. Okay, for number two, uh, the first step would be to de determine the functional group. So from the functional group, you can see there's double bonds between carbon atoms. So double bond between carbon atoms, what does it mean? It means it is an alkene. So first step would be suffix. If you've got an alkene, that means the suffix will be... Uh, E N E, right? Okay, so it's an alkene. That's the first thing. Now we can see that there's actually two of them, and it's the number, the names, the names, and the um, sorry, the structure has been given to us, and they and they, if they numbered it for you, so that makes it quite easy. So there's two of them, and we need to um, actually note that there's two of them. Okay, so now we need to add numbers, and so we add the positions to them. And we know that there's two of them. So the first position of the first um, uh, alkene bond uh, will be 
at number one. So there's a one, there's one at one, and there's one at three. So there's one at one, and there's one at three. So there's one at three. There are two. Um, there are two uh, double bonds. So that means it's di. Remember di from that prefix. And e, di. So this whole thing here is your suffix. That was the first step to find the suffix. Right. The second step we said was to find your longest chain. And this time, not, not, if you have to really think about it, you can find the longest chain here would be something like this. It looks this shape here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it'll be 5. But that doesn't contain both of the important bonds, the functional groups. So that, therefore, cannot be the chain. Therefore, that is not the right. The, the, the longest chain is here, and it's given to you, and it's numbered. Right? That just might, may help with the confusion, right? So that's the longest. So how many in the longest chain for the prefix? It's uh, a total of 4. So when there's four, what is four? Four is the answer, is butte. Butte. Right, four is butte. That was one, two, three. Then the third step would be numbered the chain, but that's already been done for us. So numbering is done. Right. Next step is to find the branches. Right, what is the branch here? In this case, uh, it's two single this is the branch here. There are two single bonds. I'm just going to take it out. So I just want to show you where it is. Just take it out. There we go. It's uh, it's two single carbon atoms. So when there's two, um, you're going to get uh, eth. It's going to be ether, right? So it's going to be ether. Ether. It's an ether bond. It's on the second atom. So it's going to be two ether. So it's on the second. Two tails in the second. So that, that's it. Right, so the final answer, now to sum it up, to make an answer, so remember we're going to reverse, it starts with 2 ethyl, um, but, and 1, so put a dash there, 1, 3, uh, die in, die, let me just get some more room there, die in, right, so that's the final answer. 2 dash ethyl butte dash 1 comma 3 die in. I'll do one more example of this, sorry. I'll do one more example of this and then we'll try the different type of question. So, um, yeah, this is the example. We're going to do this number 5, yeah. Um, I want you to take a picture of this with your phone or just write it down, draw it down if you like. Um, but, yeah. So we're gonna move on now. Uh, sorry. Okay, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's do this example. Uh, so let's just follow the steps and we'll find the answer. So the first thing we'll note here, the first step will be to find to a function. Let me actually do it on the side here to make it a little easier. So I don't have to redraw. Just thinking about how I could actually draw that out. Right. right. So we have. The important thing, so number one, so let's do number five here. The first step would be to find the functional group and it's going to give the suffix. Functional group is OH, so that means it's an alcohol. Right, so it's a hydroxyl. So um, that'll be OL or all. Um, so we know it's going to be OL. Right, how many alcohols are there? There are two, therefore it's diol. And where do these appear? We have to find the closest possible, we have to find the closest to the functional group. So if we name from this side, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, that's closer than if we had to name from this way 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is the closest way. So it's going to be 3, comma 3, die all. And that's the suffix. Right, prefix, we find the chain. And we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Since it's 7, we got hept. Right, heptan. Right, that's hept. Heptan. Right. Next step. So that's one, two, step two. Step three was numbering. We've already done the numbering uh, for the previous step. I um, mean, so that's so we've numbered. So three is numbering. We've numbered. We find that on number four there's a branch, and that helps us get to step four. Number four. There's a branch. So it's a single carbon. So we know that's going to be an isle, methyl. Methyl, why are methyl? There we go. Sorry, okay, that looks a bit ugly. Meth, 
YL. It's also on the fourth one, so it's 4 methyl. And finally, if I have to put them all together, we're going to get, uh, if we're going backwards, it's going to be 4 methyl, 4 methyl heptin, so the next one will be heptin, heptin 3,3, uh, more room here, 3,3. Sorry, we're gonna see dial. That's it, dial. And that's how you do naming. So I'll leave the rest for you to do as homework. Uh, but I've done three good examples here, quite long, but that's how you do it. That's you will be tested. This is guaranteed to come out. You'll definitely be tested on this sort of thing. So um, please, please go through this. It's very important. Right. Uh, Let's do a couple more examples of a different type, right? Where they want us to actually draw, where given a compound name, we have to draw it, right? So this is a different type of where you can also be tested in IUPAC naming and your naming of formulas. Um, so let's let's go with the first one, right? So it's a YNE, so you know there's going to be a three uh, YNE for a functional group. In the functional group, you know there's a triple bond there, and so the third hept. So hept is the key. The hept means there has to be at least seven. Hept means that at least there is seven. So let's call this one. Other one. There's two, three, four, uh, five, six. Right. That's number one here. So there are hept six. I mean seven. Sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, on three. So on the third one, one, two, three, on the third carbon, there's a triple bond. That takes care of those ones. On the fifth one, there's a methyl. So we go one, two, three, four, five. So it's one, two, three. And this is the fifth one is here. You know that there has to be a methyl. So methyl is a single bond like that. And that's it. Now you're just filling the rest. Now, these are all going to be your, obviously that won't have anything. quite straightforward if you just follow the rules and if you know how to draw them yourself then it makes it quite easy to draw. Right, that was quite straightforward. It's on the fifth carbon too. Okay, uh, let's do the next one which is, let's do number three. Let's try number three, right? We haven't done anything with the haloalkane yet. Alright, so we've got um, it's an iodo, so we know it's uh, the functional group. It has definitely um, a halalkane in it, right? Um, but it's also we also know how we've been taught so far that halalkanes also have um, are just single bonds, hydrocarbons, right? So this compound is going to have the suffix "ane," uh, but it also has, but it also contains a halogen atom. Therefore, it's a halalkane. Um, you should also know that methyl and iodo are written in alphabetical order as they should be, right? So, the first thing will be to find the longest carbonyl chain. Um, so, this is just you note know, the functional groups we got. Uh, of haloalkane, you know it's an... Um, yeah, I mean, you've got halogen, you've got an alkane, and it's a pent. Pent is 5. So, let's do 5 carbons first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, on the second one, we have an iodo, so you have an iodine, iodo, right? And the third one, we have a brown stucan. And that's about it. Now you just fill in all your hydrogens. It's, it's very, very straightforward. Halogens are very straightforward. So you just follow the steps that we, that we did in the past when we were naming. Now it's in reverse order. It's actually a lot easier to to draw them out than to actually do them yourself. There we go. That was the third one. And let's do one more, um, just for completeness sake. Uh, I haven't done carboxylic acid, so let's do that. Okay, let's do number two. 4.4-diethylheptanoic uh, acid. So the oic acid tells you to halalkane. So you know haloalkane, watch haloalkane, C-double-O-H, that's how you know haloalkane, right? 
So the first thing would be to find the longest carbon chain. Right, so hept. Let's find hept. So hept is 7. Let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Heptanoic acid. Um, when it's anoic acid, I mean uh, um, carboxylic acid, you know it's going to look something like this. And you should just put it on the end immediately. Right? Then you also start naming from the side. So that's going to be 1, your 2, your 3, and that's 4. Okay, on 4 we got diethyl. So when there's ethyl, it means that there are two carbons, like this, right? And both are number four, it says 4.4, .4, right? Uh, hydrogen is running out of room here, there we go. So it's diethyl. So I, I wonder if you've noticed how I've been doing these questions. First, I follow the exact same steps as I would when I would draw it. I, I do the functional group first, then the chain, and then finally, I add in the branches, sorry. And then that's it, now you just fill in the rest of your bonds. And your, all your hydrogens, you, you can't forget them, you, you, you won't, you'll lose marks if you don't have your hydrogens in. Oops, there's no hydrogen here at the end one. Uh, all the four bonds have been exhausted by then. See so one, two, three, four. And that's it. Right. So that's how you do an uh, 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 ethanoic, uh, sorry, um, carboxylic acid. It's, um, it's quite straightforward. I'll leave the rest for you to do as examples. Oic acid indicates carboxylic acid. It's quite simple. First, you just put your your CWH, and then from there you put your branch in whenever you need to, and then I mean you find that you put the chain and then the branch. So that's pretty much how you do these sort of examples. You just really have to learn the rules, and um, there's number three again in case you missed it. You just need to know the rules, um, know them very, very well. Uh, follow the order that was given earlier that I, that I in these notes that I made myself here. Uh, the rules for IUPAC: find the functional group first, longest chain, you number the carbons, find your branch group, and then you combine everything. Lastly, so that's IUPAC naming. I know this is a bit of a long video. You can go back. I'll post a link in the description to. Um, more examples uh, where the tables are clear and stuff and you should you should really go over that so uh, all the ones i didn't do are homework uh, the the link in the description will, will provide you solutions to those questions uh, but that's about it thanks guys